What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review of Chasing Dallas, Season 3, Episode... <clears throat> what do you want? Episode 3, Episode 4. Three. Four. The right will be in the description. The right episode. Anyway, before I get started, I want to just make a couple of quick announcements. Please make sure you guys go over to um, Every Reviews. The link to her channel will be in my description box. She, um, last week... We were on her channel, and we did an interview with um, Trey Howard from Chasing Dallas. It was a great conversation. Um, also, I want you guys to go over to Yes Bitch TV and check out um, his channel. The link will be in the description as well. We did an interview tonight with um, Wuda Lee. So, um, I want to let you guys know it was a great... Both, both um, interviews were great. Go check them out. All right. So tonight's episode, we start off, we got Reese G, we have King Kane, um, we have um, Carrie D, and we have uh, Trey, not Trey, Womack, Trey Womack. Um, we all, um, there. I say we like I was with them. They're all hanging out, you know, they, um, Trey, uh, uh, Reese invited them to a place called Gators where they do like trap bingo and stuff like that. I've done um, trap music uh, sip and paint. And a go go sipping paint. If you're from DC, you know what I'm talking about. Go go's a local music, whatever, whatever. Anyway, so they're fun little things you do. And so, you know, they're all hanging out. And Markel was invited, but he didn't show up. And not only did he not show up, he didn't really respond to anything Reese G was trying um, was to respond to Reese G. So Reese was kind of feeling a little shade. Like, I don't know what's really going on with Markel, but it's whatever. Carrie. Carried a mini bone. He ain't carried a big bone. He carried a mini bone. He gave Reese G enough information for Reese G to, for him to be like, look, you need to go talk to your friend because y'all not on the same page. Hell, they ain't even in the same library at this point. And you need to find out what's going on with him. And he did let Reese G know that him and Markel went out. They had a conversation and that right now Markel just ain't really feeling him. But he did not give Reese all the down and dirty details. Now, we also find out in this episode that, well, we already kind of knew that King Kane said he's working on a lingerie line of, what he said, jock straps and thongs, and he's having a lingerie party. He said he met um, at uh, Trey's tattoo um, party. He met a woman who has her own um, studio with pole dancing studio, what have you. And that, I've done that before, too, and that is fun as well, doing a pole dancing class. That's fun. That's a good girls' night out or guys' night out activity. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Then, um, but he let them know, everybody is invited, but you got to come in some real lingerie. Not, you can't wear no onesies, you can't wear no little pajamas. You got to come in a real, you know, little, a real, like some lingerie, honey. And Carrie D said that he wasn't really trying to go because he said he is not lingerie ready. I understand you, boo, and I feel you. Carrie D was funny and cute in his little scene, honey. He carried a little mini bone, though. Just a little mini bone, not a big bone. And, you know, Kane was throwing a little shade at Markel as well. He had started calling Markel Thriller. I think it is hilarious. Um, shady, but hilarious at the same time, honey. So we see Miss Ariel O'Hare. We see her in her full glory, honey. Ariel is with um, the queen, T.S. Madison. I love T.S. Madison. Um, she was in Dallas for a show for Pride, and Ariel dressed her. I actually remember this show, because I follow her on social media, and I remember that dress, honey. And yes, Miss Ariel, that dress was everything, okay? Um, Dior came and did her hair. Now, let me say something, Dior. Me and you ain't had no beef up until now. We ain't had no problem. But you did something that I find to be probably one of the most disrespectful things that people can do. You were like, yeah, I was late. I'm always late. People just know that about me. And when you got there, you know, T.S. was like, well, look, I ain't, you don't have time. Because he was there to do her, her hair, her wig. And she was like, look, all you got time to do is put it on. You don't have time to do no whole lot of extra because we got to go. And it was almost like he was proud of the fact that he was late. Like, that's just what I do. I have a problem with that, especially as a professional. I have a problem with the fact that you cool with being late. That is disrespectful of everybody's time. That's just my two cents, and I'm done with it. But you clearly are worth it because people 
clearly let you get away with it, so not my business. Now, the conversation that Ariel was having with T.S. Madison kind of went back to the conversation last week. I'm not going to rehash that whole thing, but T.S. Madison was letting her know, like, look, one of the biggest problems that we have is that there's division within our own community. The trans women are at the bottom of the barrel. And if you follow T.S. Madison, you know this is a conversation she has all the time, very candidly, on her show, The Queen Supreme Court. Um, but even just in her regular um, live videos that she does, and especially around this time, she spoke on it. And she's coming from a very militant mindset saying, look, the girls need to be ready. They need to be armed. They need to be prepared. Get your permits. If you live in a state where you are allowed to carry, open carry, whatever, you need to get your permits and you need to be ready. And if you can't legally get a gun, you better have something else up in your bra. And and this is what she has said. I'm not putting words in her mouth. These are things that she has said. And, you know, she said, you know, people don't like when I say that, but it is what it is. Like, if we're going to be out here, we're going to be targets. Then we need to be ready. And she said, as far as... The trans community, she said, again, I've said this, but one of the biggest problems is that there's division within the own gay community. And if you hear people who are in the gay community, they will say that all the time, especially trans women and trans men. They will tell you all the time. And if you look at a show like Pose, um, it gets into a lot of those dynamics. Now, mind you, the show is set in the 80s, but that lets you know that this is still going on fast forward 30 years. This is still going on. There was an episode in season one of Pose that dealt with the discrimination within the own gay community with trans women. So, um, you know, Ariel O'Hara saying, look, this is kind of the mindset that I'm coming from as well. Now, Ariel, I know you look at um, my reviews. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to let that one, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. But, yeah, so, um, I understand the conversation. I, I mean, I do. I understand the conversation. And, again, I don't necessarily disagree. If you are in, if you, I know you are, if you know you are a targeted, part of a targeted group, then you have to make sure that you are protecting yourself. And I'm not in the community, so I'm not going to speak on, like, all of the different divisions within the community, but it is what it is, you know, you can see it for yourself. Um, my boy Oliver Twixt is in this episode, so we have a confessional from him, and he is in the episode all throughout. Um, shouts out to Oliver, that's my boo thing. My intro, if you like my intro, Oliver did it. Um, check him out, um, on Instagram. Um, I believe, I believe I have him in my description box. If not, I'll put it in there. Um, but he did my intro, so if you like it, you know, go check him out. Um... We had uh, Miss Ayana Van Ayan was Van Zap, and she gave her um, her rundown. And let me tell you something: I was loving it because she was reading Miss Ariel O'Hara, okay, and she was letting Ariel O'Hara know, look. I definitely understand how you felt last week. I felt your pain. However, condoning death of anyone else to to, to mm, rectify or get revenge for the death of someone, that's never the answer. You know, you're going to have to really figure out and hone your, your anger. Um, and I, I, I again, I, I, again, I'm not going to rehash what was said last week, but I, I feel it and I appreciate it. And I'm glad that she said it. She pretty much summed it up probably the best I can. I really like this, in, this insert that Reese is doing. I really love that insert that Reese is doing. Um, anyway, so... The next scene um, that we had, well, I'm going to say just Reese, the production. I don't want to keep saying it's just Reese. I know it's a team. But I really like the addition of Miss Van Zapp. I think that is a great um, addition. I think that we're getting some very unbiased opinions, okay? So the next scene we have, we see Reese meeting up with, um, and it is named Antonio, the guy that from the game night that was that had a little something, something. We see Ariel, and, and we have Oliver showing up with Miss Ariel O'Hare. They're all hanging out. They're having lunch. Oliver is doing what Oliver does, honey. Oliver is being funny and messy and all at the same time. Um, once again, Markel is invited. He's a no-show. And Reese was like, I can tell that he read my text. That's going to be the death of y'all. But these, I, you can see somebody read the text stuff, you know. 
Um, but Reese was like, I know he read the text, but you know, no call, no show. What's good? Like, what's going on? And um, of course, they're like, why don't you talk to him? Why don't you find? You know what I mean? They're kind of doing the whole being a good friend thing. You know, talk to him and find out what's really going on. You know, get get the real tea. You know. So, we have shade coming from both sides, because now we got Olive on there with his little bit of shade. He did a whole thing on Reese G and Ariel being, you know, you know, some some thickums and whether, you know, if they fall out or come together, honey. Anyway, ain't nobody fooling with Olive and his silliness. So, we um, are invited to a performance. It's still Pride, and um, Ariel is performing at an event. She's, you know, doing, doing a show. And, you know, lip syncing and everything. And, um, Reese's there, Markel's there, Kane, the crew was there, okay? I think, I don't think Trey or Carrie was there, but Kane, Reese, we didn't see George this episode. Did we see George at all this episode? Anyway, Markel throws all kinds of shade Reese's way. Reese tries to speak to him. Markel gives him the whatever child. Um, something about them not being able to get in and name not on the list. I don't know, child. Ariel, you can't be inviting people places and then don't put their name on the list. And if that was a production error, then production, y'all gotta do better. You can't just be having people outside waiting to get in, honey. You can't be, that's not, that's not cool. That's not cute. But anyway, everybody got in and, um, Dior was there with his, um, husband and they look very cute. They make a very handsome, um, couple. Um... Ariel looked really nice, honey. She, you know, you definitely could tell that that's a, um, a creation she put together. She had a hat with the lights around it, honey. She was performing um, a Beyonce song, which I didn't know to the end of the episode because I know I'm not a part of the Beehive. I didn't know that song. I didn't know that song. But I knew it sounded like Beyonce when she was performing. Um, and she worked the room, honey. She was getting her tips. All, everybody was, it was a good show. She, I think she put on a very good performance. She looked, and she looked really nice. I love that outfit she had on. I really like that hat with the lights around it. Honey, it was, it was real cute. Now, Reese said he missed the whole damn performance because he said he was somewhere trying to get his flirt on. Reese, now you can flirt the rest of the four hours you were there. You can't flirt the 15 minutes that she out there performing. The song don't last but about seven minutes. You couldn't stop for seven minutes, Reese. Watch this woman perform. Anyway, child. So, after the performance was over, Reese was like, look, I'll, I'm, you know, I got to go. I don't need to be here. She felt the shade. She was feeling some kind of way. She felt like it was coming from a few different directions. And I, I, I'm sorry, Reese. I don't mean to be calling you she. My, I apologize. He, um, was feeling the shade coming from a lot of different directions. And um, he was like, I got to go. So they're outside. Dior's out there. Oliver's out there. And he's telling them, look, that he's feeling the shade. And he's just not really feeling it. And he's ready to go. Oliver messy ass talking about something. Well, I think y'all need to talk. You want me to go get Markel? Want me to go get him now? I'll go get Markel. Markel! But he, at least he knew he was being messy. Because he was. Um, Markel comes out. And they get to arguing. And... Look, this is another one of those situations where I don't even know what the hell they mad about. Some, again, text messages. And Reese is like, why would you even believe? Oh, and Markel is all buddy-buddy with it. The Antonio dude who Markel... Anyway. So, no, that was Premier that wasn't getting along with Antonio. Whatever. So... Somehow or another, there's some text messages. Supposedly, Reese said something. Markel think Reese lying. Reese is like, Markel, I don't know what the hell you talking about. They get to arguing. Markel puts his hands in Reese's face. They break it up. Then Markel throws a drink at Reese. And Reese was like, look, I got to go. Oliver, if you ride with me, you better get in the car now. You're going to be left. Honey, Oliver said, oh, no, I'm going with you. I don't even know where I am. Because, you know, he was only in Texas with, because, um, you know, he works for T.S. Madison. So he was in Texas with T.S. Madison um, doing the show. So I don't know what the beef is with Markel and Reese. And the only thing I can do is I can hope that it will be cleared up, that we will get some clarity on that situation because – yeah, I know how I feel about half-assed stories where I don't know the whole story. And all I picked up was Reese line, or at least Markel thinks Reese's line, and it's something with some text messages about something that Reese supposedly said. Child, I don't know. 
But it sounds really silly. Whatever it is that they arguing about, it sounds really silly. Um, and that was, that was, I believe that was the end of this, this episode. Let me make sure. But yeah, I believe that was the end of the episode, child. I think we saw the previews for the next episode. It looks like Markel and Reese going to have part two, child. Anyway, um, it was nice to see um, Ariel O'Hara and Dior in their um, element. Um, let me know what y'all think, honey. Drop it in the comments.